decided that he wanted to go to India and to Nepal. And so everybody gave him some money. And away he went. And then we heard about one of the people that he was going to send a book to got busted. <coughs> And then another person got busted. And so we realized that there was a hot, that the RCMP were onto what was happening and they were watching this stuff come in. So. It's Ray Dallin. Ray Dallin had, had sent all this stuff in. And he had come back home by this time. By the time they sent, he was back home again. And he was at Clearwater. So what happened was that. that Brother Michael, not this Brother Michael, but another Brother Michael, had a pay parcel sent to the bank. Okay. And so the bank called and said, come and get your parcel, because the RCMP delivered it there. And when he walked into the manager's office to pick up his parcel, he realized that the manager was not the manager. And he realized that he probably was in deep shit. So... We thanked the manager for the book, and we knew the routine that they were going to use. They were going to wait till he got home, till he opened the book, and then they come in and they bat you with the book in your right. hands. You know that it's there. You, everything is there, cool. So he's got this little red car, a, a little a sort of a sporty car, and so he goes out and throws this thing in his car, and he tells me, he told me the story. He see, sees as soon as he pulls out, he sees a car pull out behind him. So he figures, okay. So he goes racing around the back corners, around the back laneways, at, uh, coming up to Clearwater, all the way down this road and down that road, and racing, and nobody stops him, nobody bugs him, but this car sticks like a, like shit to a blanket, right? <laughs> I see him come up our driveway, and our driveway is a bitch. But if you know how to drive it, you can get in pretty damn quick, okay? But it's got all great big bumps and holes in it. It was to slow people down that had a tendency to race up and Makes down Makes sense, yeah. So he came down, and he came down really, really quick, and he said, the cops are after me. Stall them if you can. And poof, away he went. Oh. So the cops come down. They come, I, they come screaming down the road. I stand in front of our driveway. Got to stop. He says, I'm in hot pursuit. I said, you know where you're going? He said, no. I said, well, if you're in hot pursuit, go. So he went, zoom, down the road. <laughs> and he came back. And he said, I don't know where the man lives. And I said, who are you looking for? He said, Michael... Uh, 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 Nermy, I think. Nermy. And I said, oh, well, I'll have my son show you. So he, my son jumped to the car. My dad jumped in the car with him and showed them where Michael lived. And by the time they'd gotten there, Michael ripped the covers off the book, whipped the, across the, the, the pathways behind him, through the trees and everything else, up to the treehouse, and handed the two co copies to Ray. I arrived almost immediately afterwards, because I, as soon as the RCMP were headed over to Michael's place, I went zip up the road to mm -hmm. Ray's place, up to the treehouse. And I said, I got to Ray's place. He, I said, you got the coverage? He said, yeah. I said, give him to me. He broke a great big chunk off the corner of one. He said, this is mine. Handed me the others. I said to one of the guys who was a wrestler, I said, we're going to walk down to the, to the house. Together, you mm -hmm. and me. And I said, if anybody comes up and accuses me, and I say no, punch him out before he gets a chance to say too much. <laughs> you walk down, down the house. I stuck the stuff away. A little while later, the RCMP came back down. I said, well, did you get him? And they said, well, he wasn't there. <laughs> so away they went. What happened was that the yeah, said they came screaming up to Michael's campsite. There's a fire burning in his garbage barrel. They go wolf, running over, grab the door, rip his door open, and here's Michael putting the cock to his old lady. <laughs> <laughs> so we ain't doing something he shouldn't be doing. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they didn't think to... 
Check if it's in the barrel. I don't know what's going to the book. Oh, it was, it was just hilarious. But they've gone through so much stuff with us. You know, like, our people have... have, have a routine, them. it gets to be after a while, eh, Walter? Like, routine, eh? Hey. Well, it's all this stuff. Repeat it, yourself the same thing in different, different forms, the same thing. That's though, right. Eh? Our people have been involved at one level or another with, with the importing of, of sacrament ever since we knew it was sacrament. We, we went to the government and asked for permission, you know. We went to the, to the uh, Department of, of uh, uh, Consumer and, and Public Relations or whatever it was, uh, Consumer Commercial. Importing and stuff, and asked for a license to import. We got a letter back from the RCMP saying that, uh, from some guy named Diamond, who said that they, that we couldn't have a permit. So we wrote back to the RCMP and to the, again, to the company, to the uh, government, saying that we weren't asking the RCMP's permission for, for uh, the importation license. What we were saying was, when it was possible for one to be issued, we wanted to be first on the list. <laughs> so they still have our letter that says, when they give a license to import marijuana or hashish <laughs> into this country, we should be first on the list. Oh. <laughs> I know, but I say ever it was. since 